Welcome to TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. On our show, we've driven cars that are powered by vegetable oil, hydrogen, even wood pellets. But today, we're checking out a car that's fueled by the most abundant energy source on the planet. I give you the solar car. All right, we're here at the University of Michigan at the Wilson Center with the solar car team. And this is Eric. Eric, thanks for being with us. Nice to meet you. Tell me a little bit about the solar car team. It's a completely student-run project. Started in 1989, and we've been racing and building solar cars ever since. There's four different divisions. We have engineering, which focuses on designing the car, building the car. Um, strategy, which focuses on actually racing the car, so how fast we should go. Operations, which focuses on shipping the car to Australia, maintaining our facilities. And then business, which focuses on racing the $1.2 million budget, working with PR and uh, sponsors and such. This is Quantum, our 11th car. What's this made of? Almost entirely out of carbon fiber, a few aluminum parts in the suspension, and titanium roll cage, but it's designed to be as light as possible while still being completely structural and safe. So the battery we use, uh, lithium ion technology, the motor itself uh, is 98% efficient. It's about 12 horsepower, the power of a hairdryer, yet we can go almost 80 to 105 miles an hour. How many solar cells are you actually incorporating in this? Um, so we're allowed to have six square meters of solar cells on top of the car by regulation, and we try and pack as many in there as we can. So the cells come as almost square with the corners cut off, and that kind of wastes a little bit of the area. We actually cut it into a rectangular shape and we can pack them really close to each other. What do we have going on here? So the battery's right here in the middle of the car. We gotta cool it somehow, so we have intake duct here, and there's fans in the battery that draw the air all the way through and dump it back out. We draw that all from the wheel wells. Basically a wishbone like you'd find on a car. We drop the axle below the lower control arm. As soon as we turn the tire, um, that pushes open this panel and allows the tire to turn. So this is our motor controller. It converts the power from the battery into three-phase current that powers the motor. One and a half mil. Yeah, exactly. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> This is basically our steering wheel. Some standard things, these outer buttons are the blinkers of the car, so that will basically uh, control your turn signals. This car is all street legal. This button here we call NOS. This basically increases the current you can run through the motor, so that we'll use for passing a car if we just need more power. We can send text messages to the driver with this screen here. Oh wow. Basically the driver can respond with a yes or no. Up here, these are switches for the solar array. Basically, we can turn off or on parts of the array. Uh, so for example, at the beginning of a race, our battery will be fully charged and we could overcharge. So we'll turn the array off for the first couple minutes. Oh wow. We don't have an accelerator pedal. Those are on the steering wheel. So right here is the accelerator. Uh, you oh, can see wow. the car okay. yeah. jumps there a bit. And then on the left is regenerative braking. So can you talk to me a little bit about what the World Solar Challenge is? It's an 1,800-mile race through the Australian outback um, every two years. It goes from Darwin down to Adelaide. There's race hours, so you only race from 8 to 5, and you pull off to the side of the road, camp for the night, and get up and do it again the next morning. It's a lot more than just the solar car. We have five to six support vehicles that drive with it at all the time. So we have a lead vehicle that's right in front protecting the car, a chase vehicle which is right behind it that houses all our strategists. Ideal strategy is we race the car and at the end of the day we have zero state of charge left in the battery. You know, that means we ran as fast as we possibly could. That's an ideal scenario, but the weather will change. You know, sometimes a cloud will be there, the wind will affect the car. And so what I do is I sit in the car and I am um, and I continue to model the changing conditions. I will model how those changes should affect how fast we want to go. So what's next for the solar car team? We're already starting designs for our next car to race in the 2013 World Solar Challenge. You know, take some new ideas, take what worked on Quantum, and apply that all into our thoughts, our ideas, and designs for the next car. Great, well, we wish you guys best of luck there. Yep, thank Thanks you. Thanks for your time. All right, so let's be honest. Maybe not everybody's gonna be driving solar cars in the future. But what is really interesting about this is that with energy efficiency standards being raised, auto manufacturers are having to look at the same principles that these guys are. Aerodynamics, power management, and lightweight materials. And the truth is, those kind of principles are gonna be steering and leading the industry for years to come. All right, for TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. See you next week.